Hello and welcome to Bay College's online lectures for college algebra. In this video we're going to look at section 1.5 which is solving inequalities. The first thing we're going to look at is an equality in standard form. We have AX plus B is greater than C and hopefully we recall these symbols. Uh, this, this being greater than, it could also be less than or less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So, Recall these symbols and know what they mean. Um, when we're solving equations like this, or excuse me, inequalities like this, they're different than equations. We're not looking for a single answer or a couple of answers. We're actually looking for a set of answers, where x could be uh, an interval of values, which contains actually infinite solutions. So when we write our answer, the first thing we're going to look at is interval notation. We have to recall our uh, open interval, which means the endpoints aren't included. We would use something like that if we had greater than or less than. We have our closed intervals, which means the endpoints of the interval are included. And we'd use those for uh, these symbols are less than and equal to or greater than and equal to. Uh, sometimes we'll have an interval where one of the endpoints isn't included and one is included, or vice versa. These are called half open or half closed intervals. These words are interchangeable, essentially. But when we're dealing with infinity, as an example, this is negative infinity to positive infinity. This would be our entire number line. Maybe all real numbers are the solution. So we'd write the interval like this. What we have to remember is when we're dealing with infinity, we have to put it in parentheses. Think of uh, this symbol as a box, this bracket as a box. You can only put so many items into a box before it fills up. You would not be able to put an infinite number of items into a box. So we have to have an open interval or parentheses when dealing with infinity. Uh, so let's take a look at how we express our answers when it comes to uh, finding inequalities. This is called set notation. In proper set notation, we have to have these braces. And it's read x such that x is less than 9. This x is just saying this is the variable we're dealing with. And such that, it's kind of old English, that means the values of x that are less than 9. So it's actually read x such that x is less than 9 in this example. The, what, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to see what does this look like on a graph. Well, our graphs here have no uh, units to it, so we can apply our own units. If this value is 9, x is less than 9. That means any value to the left on the number line. And because it's not equal to, I'm going to use a parenthesis. Any value to the left. Now I've expressed my answer in a graphical notation. And there is another way to graph this, is I could have used an open circle. It means that from this value, but not including it, to the left. It means the same thing as a parenthesis. I prefer to use uh, the parentheses or the brackets. Let's look at this example. x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 9. Oh, let me back up for a moment. Let's also express this answer in interval notation. And this is why I prefer to use the parentheses or brackets when I'm at this value on my graph, is because it tells me what to use when I go to write the interval notation. Now, the thing about interval notation is it's always written from least value to the greater value left to right. So what is my least value? Well, this arrow is pointing off to negative infinity. So I'm going to have negative infinity with a parenthesis, because I can't contain infinity, up to the value of 9. But because I have this parenthesis here, it means I do not include it. So we have this open interval from negative infinity to 9. The next example here, x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 9. And uh, when it comes to set notation, some instructors, they're fine with you just putting x uh, and the inequality symbol in the number. Others might want you to write out the entire set notation. So it's good to know both of them. Now, x being greater than or equal to negative 9, well, let's say this is negative 9 on our number line. x is greater than or equal to. Well, if it's equal to or greater than, we're going to use a bracket because it could equal this value. It includes it. And then x is greater than, which means any value to the right on our number line. If I want to graph this, the smallest value I have is negative 9. And it is included. And this arrow goes to 
positive infinity, and then I use an open end here because I cannot contain infinity. So this is interval notation for this example. Here, we have what's called a compound inequality, and we'll discuss this a little bit more. x such that 2 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 4. Now, if we just look at this for a moment, we can see x lies between these two values. So if this is 2 and this is 4, and let me just check for a moment. Oh, in the notes, it's actually negative 2. That doesn't change much, because it was written from smallest to largest value. We can see that this value is not included. So I can use a parenthesis. And because this value is less than x, x lies to the right of negative 2. But this piece here, we have to c combine them. This says it does include 4, but x is any value to the left of it. x is less than or equal to 4. So the values of this interval are actually a single interval. And that's what you're going to get with compound inequalities. So if I just take this information to write interval, parenthesis at negative 2, which means it's not included, and positive 4, which is included. That would be my interval notation. Now, this here, just to make sure you understand this, this is what's called an and statement. Hopefully, we remember and and ors when it comes to inequalities. Because in this next example, we have an or statement, which means we're looking for the solutions that are true in this one or true in this one. If we go back to this, we're looking for the values that are true for both cases, this and this. So that's an and statement. All right, so let's look what we have here. We have negative 2 and a positive 4 as my values. I'm going to put them on my graph here. And this first statement says x is less than negative 2, and it does not include it. So I use a parenthesis and any value to the left, okay? because x is less than that value. This one here says x is greater than or equal to 4. Well, it contains 4, but it's greater than, which means any value to the right. If we notice the difference between the previous example and this example, here we have two intervals. When we have two intervals, we essentially have to unite them. And that's why we call it a union. Or statements means union. So we have to use this union symbol. And then we have a bracket at positive 4 to infinity. And I use a parenthesis because both of these negative infinity, positive infinity need a parenthesis. And then finally, we have this right here. x such that x is any real number. This is any value we can find on the number line. Essentially, it is the entire number line. There's no need to put any parentheses or brackets or anything on here because we're talking about an infinite value, any number on the number line. And we can denote that, as we've seen before, from negative infinity to positive infinity. I'm making sure to use parentheses. All right, let's look at the next set here. When we go to solve inequalities, what we have to keep in mind is one important thing that makes an inequality different than an equation. In an equation, what we do to one side, we do to the other. That holds true in inequalities. But if I, have, if I multiply or divide by a negative, I have to remember to change the direction or the sign that lies in the inequality. Why is that? Well, let's take a look at this example here. In order to solve this, what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Well, I want to get x by itself, so I'm going to undo this multiplication using division. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Now, if we assess this for a moment, this value had a negative coefficient. But when I divide it by a negative, now it's going to have a positive coefficient. There was a sign change due to multiplication or division. Here, before I did that division, this value was positive. But now I'm dividing it by a negative. So I'm going to get negative 5 halves. We had a change in sign. Well, if we have a change in sign, we have to remember to change this sign because of that multiplication or division rule. So x is less than negative 5 halves. If I were to graph that, I'll put it right here. If we have negative 5 halves, x is any value less than that. So it does not include it, a parenthesis, and this way. And now I can write the interval. This arrow goes to negative infinity up to 
negative 5 halves with a parenthesis because it does not include that value. So I was able, this is essentially set notation, proper set notation. I just have to put that x such that and the braces on either side. Once we solve an inequality, it's actually almost in set notation. Uh, some of your instructors, like I said, might just have you write that. Some of them want you to write out proper set notation. So know, that, uh, know what proper set notation is. All right, let's look at this example right here. We want to solve this inequality for x, so we just have to undo the math. What we do to one side, we do to the other. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. And I get negative 3x is less than or equal to 3. And here we're going to see an example where we have to divide by negative 3. What I do to one side, I do to the other. This side was negative. Now it's positive. This side was positive. Now it's negative. So I have to change this sign. The redundant statement is, if the signs change, change the sign. And that's only in multiplication or division. All right, so now we have it in set notation. And we want to write it in graphical notation. So I say, OK, here's negative 1. x is any value greater than or equal to. So we'll use a bracket. And we go to the right, greater than. And in set notation, that's a bracket at negative 1 to infinity. And we remember to use a parenthesis. All right. Next example, well, it's a little bit more complicated, but just like we work with in equations, we can eliminate parentheses using the distributed property. In this case, maybe we have to FOIL something out when they get to higher degree polynomials. But let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to distribute the 3. And I remember to distribute it to both terms. And then I'm going to distribute the 4. And now I'm ready to go ahead and uh, solve for x. I can subtract 12x from both sides. And I can add 12 to both sides. And then I can divide by 3. And because it's a positive 3, I don't have to worry about changing any signs, because this is a positive coefficient. And when I divide by a positive value, it remains positive. The sign doesn't change. So now I have set notation, and I can graph this. If this is 4 thirds, it, 4 thirds is not included, but x is less than. So any value to the left, and that goes from negative infinity up to 4 thirds. So set notation, graphical notation, and interval notation. All right, let's move on here. The next thing we're going to look at is compound and double inequalities. We saw one example of that on the first board that we were working on. And I said we'd look a little bit more into that. This is an and statement. When we have and statements is where we can write it as a compound or double inequality. If we can imagine for a moment, I'm going to take this value and just lift it off the board and flip it around. If I could just lift it off the board and turn it, or maybe if this was a piece of glass, I could look at it from the other side, and it would look just like this. So I have negative 3 is less than x, and I also have x is less than or equal to 8. Because it's an and statement, it's saying, what are the values that solve this one and this one, which means simultaneously? Which one solves both of these inequalities? Well, that means the value of x has to lie in between these values. And to check if we have it in proper compound inequality form here, cover up the x in one of the symbols. Is negative 3 less than or equal to 8? Yes, it's a true statement. Is negative 3 less than 8? No matter which one I cover up, it makes a true statement. And they both have to be true. Compound inequalities are always written, just like interval notation, from the least value to the greater value. And now if I were to put this in uh, interval notation, Parenthesis at negative 3, because it is not included. And at 8, it is included. So x lies between negative 3 and 8. And we can actually see that in the compound inequality. x is between those values. So when we're dealing with compound inequalities, and we want to solve something that's in this form, well, 
we treat it just like we did uh, an equation. What we do to one side, we do to the other. But if you'll notice, there's more than just two sides. So what we do to one side, we do to all sides. That's the only difference here. So to solve something like this, I'm going to subtract 4 from all sides. What you do to one side, you do to all. So I get negative 3 is less than 2x is less than or equal to 3. And now I can divide by 2. It's a positive 2, so we're not going to have any sign changes. So I get negative 3 halves is less than x is less than or equal to positive 3 halves. And now I can put that on a graph if I'm asked to graph the solution set. Negative 3 halves, positive 3 halves. And just because it is a compound inequality, I know x lies between those values. A parenthesis here and a bracket over there, because it does include it, and any value in between. And if we look at this, we could just write it in interval notation by taking the information right off of here. Negative 3 halves, not including. 3 halves are included. All right, another example. Well, what if we have rational expressions? What if we have fractions? What can we do? Well, just like in equations, we can clear fractions by multiplying through by the LCD. So I look at this and say, well, I have 3 and 2 in my denominator, so the LCD is 6. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this as a shorthand notation. I'm multiplying all terms by the LCD. 6 times 1 third, or 1 third of 6, is 2. 6 times this quantity over 2, well, 6 over 2 is 3, so it's 3 times that quantity, and I'm going to distribute it. And then 6 times this last quantity, 6 divided by the 3 is 2 times the top is 4. And now I'm, I have a compound inequality just like the previous one with no fractions in it. So I can subtract 3 from both, from all sides, and then divide by 3. And of course, we can graph that. And I'll move it over here, because hopefully you see that your quiz is right there. Hopefully you'll be able to do that on your own. Negative 1 third, positive 1 third, parenthesis, bracket, the values in between. So set notation, x such that x, and I won't write that in there. Uh, graphical notation and interval notation. Now, this is your quiz. I'd like you to try this one on your own. And uh, please show your answer in set notation, in graphical notation, and in interval notation. Try all three. All right, we're going to move over here, and we're going to talk about one more property of inequalities. And it's called the reciprocal property. The reciprocal property basically says, if some value is greater than 0, in other words, if a value is positive, then its reciprocal must also be positive. And that holds true that if a value is less than 0 or negative, then its reciprocal must also be negative. They have to have the same sign. As an example, positive 2, its reciprocal is positive 1 half. They have the same sign. They're both greater than 0. If we look at this example, this is 2x minus 1 to the negative first power, which is the reciprocal. 1 over this value is greater than 0. Well, if 1 over that value is greater than 0, then this value itself has to be greater than 0. So I only have to worry about that. I can rewrite it as 2x minus 1 is greater than 0. I don't have to worry about uh, the fact that this is a reciprocal. And now I can just solve it. I can add 1 to both sides and then divide by 2. So I get x is greater than 1 half. Now, if we wanted to graph that or write it in set notation, we can, because we've seen enough examples that hopefully we'll be able to do that. But this is the value we'd get. x is greater than 1 half. Now, I want to show you another method, because this is just one property. But another method, when these type of examples get more complex, when they're more than uh, just a single binomial, maybe we're going to deal with uh, polynomial inequalities. And we will eventually in this class. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it like this. And I'm going to do something that we've done before with equations. Before you solve an equation, one thing you should always do is identify the domain. Well, I know I can never divide by 0. 
So what value can x not equal? Well, if I set this equal to 0, I add 1 and divide by 2, and I get a positive 1 half. x cannot equal 0. For a moment, if we look at what we wrote here, x is greater than 0, well, that does not include 1 half. So that's what this says. x does not include 1 half. Now, we can just use that information. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because when they get more complicated or, or higher degree polynomials, this is a preferred method for solving them. We have two intervals here. We have the interval to the right and the interval to the left. I can just pick a test point to find out which one's true. Well, let's say I choose 0, because 0 is to the left of 1 half. If I put 0 in for this, 2 times 0 is 0, 1 over negative 1 is a negative value. Negative values are not greater than 0. So this interval is false. Well, let's pick a value over here. Let's say positive 1. Positive 1 is to the right of 1 half. 2 times 1 is 1, or excuse me, 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 divided by 1 is positive 1. That is greater than 0. So this value worked, which means this interval is my solution. x is greater than 1 half. And that's exactly what we had before. And I can actually see the interval now if I did put it in interval notation. 1 half to positive infinity. So this has been section 1.5 for college algebra. Thank you for watching. It's not stopping.